Hello you absolute legends. The madman finally did it. On the 13th of September 2021, the speedrunner Carl Jobst achieved this lawsuit. Until now, Billy Mitchell had only made threats about suing me, but he finally pulled the trigger and has made it official by filing a complaint in the District Court of Queensland, which is the state in which I live. It's been a pretty crazy week because on the exact same day that I was served by Billy Mitchell, I was cancelled. Yes, that's right, cancelled. It's game over. A small group of people have been trying to cancel me for a while now, and their campaign has finally cracked the big time. Normally I wouldn't pollute this channel by responding to this kind of drama because it's almost entirely made up of lies and false narratives, but they have started to make insane claims about my family, even making fun of my one-year-old son. So I thought I should talk about it, as it's also an interesting case study on how people buy into and accept things as fact without a second's thought. Even though the majority of this cancellation is based on lies and mischaracterizations, there are also some valid criticisms as well. So today we will look at both sides, the crazy insane lies and also the genuine concerns that I actually agree with. But first, let's take a look at this lawsuit. Normally, I'd give you a full breakdown of this kind of thing, but because this one involves me, I'm going to keep my cards a lot closer to my chest. What I will tell you is that I am being sued for defamation, and the amount of damages being sought is $450,000. I will definitely be giving you updates as we go, but I don't want to give out too many details or strategies before I use them in court. Defamation lawsuits are a bit different in Australia because we don't have punitive damages like the US. In America, you see lawsuits where people are demanding millions of dollars in punitive damages, and punitive damages are designed to punish the defendant for wrongdoings and dissuade others from taking similar actions. Australia really only has compensatory damages, which are designed to mitigate any damage caused, whether that be emotional or economic. So if Billy Mitchell wants $450,000 in damages, he'd need to directly show that something I've said has caused him to lose that much money. That's going to be a bit of a struggle, given that Billy Mitchell doesn't really have much of a reputation to destroy by this point. Not only does the public widely accept that he is a serial liar and cheater, but he's also being sued for millions of dollars for fraud. Billy Mitchell already sued Twin Galaxies and many other people for destroying his reputation, citing massive economical loss. There are only so many times you can claim that a party has destroyed your reputation before it no longer holds any merit. Aside from this, I have multiple defenses. I never make claims without ample evidence to support them or some kind of justification. When I do get something wrong, I would always be happy to admit it. In fact, I even made a clarification to something I said in a video that Billy Mitchell said was wrong, which I will link in the description. I am a big fan of discourse, and am generally always willing to listen and consider the other side of the story. It doesn't mean I'll accept it or agree, but I have a very open mind and will listen as long as the discussion is respectful and sincere. As everyone knows, lawsuits are extremely expensive. If this goes the entire distance, the final price tag could be well over $100,000, especially given that I have a really good team of lawyers. A lot of people have offered support, and I'm definitely contemplating doing a GoFundMe, but I feel really bad doing so given that I did one just a few months ago for the other people Billy is suing. As I've mentioned before, Minecraft creator Notch has pledged to help and has been doing so. But again, I feel bad taking money from anyone, no matter how wealthy they might be. Let me know in the comments what you think I should do, and I will definitely be providing updates as the lawsuit progresses. A big thank you for all of the support, it is truly appreciated. I just hope this legal attack doesn't take up too much of my time so I can continue to produce videos. Now onto this cancellation. A few people in the speedrunning community have been trying to cancel me ever since I started making content on YouTube, for reasons we will get into in a moment. Until now, it has never really impacted me and I chose to ignore it, because I felt like it was spurred on by bad faith actors and trolls who simply didn't like me and were trying to find ways to make me look bad. But recently, I did get impacted. I had just started a podcast with another speedrunning content creator, Tomato Anus, and we had recorded a few episodes. Then, last week, he got sent screenshots from someone hoping to make him disassociate with me, which he did, announcing his decision on Twitter. 
This tweet then gets posted on Reddit, which is where things get crazy. People flock to the topic, posting insane, made-up, false claims that just blew my mind. Interspersed is some valid criticism, but from what I can tell, it appears to be mostly an intentional smear campaign by a group of people hoping to cancel me. And the crazy thing is that people who are reading the comments just accept everything as fact without asking any questions. So how and why did this happen? It goes back to November of 2018, when another GoldenEye speedrunner, R. White Goose, got banned from AGDQ after a massive collection of screenshots was made public, showing him saying terrible things in his Discord between 2017 and early 2018. And these weren't just terrible things, they were really, really terrible. Goose was ostracized from the community and labeled a Nazi. This all relates to me because I associated with Goose online, and in the screenshot dump, I was in one of the screenshots. In the album of 150 pictures, I appeared in one. What I said wasn't good, and I will talk about it later in the video, but the thought process for some people was that because Goose said bad things in his Discord, that made his Discord a Nazi Discord. And because I appeared in one of the screenshots, that meant that I was in a Nazi Discord. Essentially, it is guilt by association. I interacted with someone who said terrible things, and I was in his Discord, so by extension I am terrible. The truth, however, is that I was very rarely even in his Discord, certainly not while everything was going on. The screenshot I was in was captured in May of 2018, which was later than all of the other screenshots. For the very brief time that I was in there, I realized it was a degenerate place and I left. I didn't know about the true extent of what was said in there, but based on what I did see, I knew it wasn't a positive environment and I left. Even if I were in there the entire time, which is not true, it's extremely disingenuous to claim that people know what is said in every Discord server they are in. I'm in 50 servers, and I only really read one, which is my own. I have no idea what is said in other servers, nor should I be expected to. There were thousands of people in that server because Goose was one of the biggest speedrunning content creators at the time, and most people had no idea what was going on. I did eventually find out everything shortly before things became public, but by this point in time, Goose was coming to me and asking for advice about how to apologize, disavow what he had previously said, and make a positive change. I agreed to help him, and he seemed sincere. I have chat logs from before everything became public and before he was banned of me advising him to apologize, close his discord, disavow what he had said, and I was also helping him to make amends with people he had wronged in the past. We had even organized a live stream on the 30th of November where he was going to publicly apologize and disavow everything. But two days before that happened, everything blew up. Even though the truth is that I wasn't in the Discord, I didn't know what was being said, and when I found out I was actively telling Goose to disavow everything and apologize, the narrative that they are trying to spin is the complete opposite. They are claiming that not only was I in the Discord, but I also knew and even endorsed what was said. I know there is a percentage of the population that thinks you should completely cut off people who have bad views, but I don't agree with that. For most of my life, I've wanted to be a psychologist. I studied psychology in university. I wouldn't be a very good psychologist if I refused to speak with or help people with unhealthy ideas. Goose himself even stated afterwards that my role was always to try to help him move forward in a more positive way. Who in the community has influenced you the most? This is, this is all from a guy named Xfinity. Um, who in the community has influenced the most? Honestly, like it really has to be Carl. Um, Carl has always been there for me when I fucked up, and he's always been willing to teach me things and, and, and lead me on a better way. And that's not just like, you know, I know people have asked about me and his stream over the past couple of months, and he said, yeah, I talk with Goose every day, and like, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna get on the right track and, and, and move forward in, in a good manner. Um, but even in the past, when I've, when I've fucked up, he's... He's, um, you know, been there for me and, and tried to steer me, steer me down the straight and narrow, right? So. Now, just for full transparency, I'm not friends with Goose. I haven't associated or even spoken with him in well over two years, but I didn't make a big spectacle out of it or virtue signal on Twitter, and I had absolutely no interest in talking about it until I was forced. Yet people to this day continue to spread false information about our relationship. 
Let's take a look at a few more lies that are being spread. People were saying that I pressured my wife into getting breast implants. When I read this, I was blown away because my wife doesn't have breast implants, nor would I ever suggest or want this. I wouldn't change a single thing about my wife. I had absolutely no idea where this was coming from. Then I see this screenshot being shared around as proof. Now, I must warn you that my sense of humor is crude and immature when I'm around friends, despite what I may put across on this channel. If you don't like crude humor, I apologize, and I wish I didn't have to share this, but unfortunately, I don't have a choice given the disgusting and vile nature of these accusations. In my Discord, I mentioned that I was at the hospital because my wife had to get surgery, and someone said, here I was thinking you were finally getting the titty implants. Someone else said, 12-inch cock and double D tits would make Carl unstoppable. And I replied, if YouTube keeps getting bigger, the titty implants are gonna happen. Even without the context, it's obvious they are talking about me getting breast implants, and it's incredibly disingenuous to take it any other way. I had a running gag on my Twitch channel that the only way my stream was ever going to grow was by getting breast implants. I even set up a mock donation incentive. It never had anything to do with my wife. This theme of taking jokes that me and my viewers make around each other and warping them to mean something else is standard practice for these people. Another running gag on my Twitch channel is penis jokes. Almost all of the emotes on my Twitch channel are eggplant related. The humor lies in the fact that it's so ridiculous and so stupid. It's parody. It's self-aware in its absurdity. Some of them are pretty creative though. This one is called Arnold Schwarzen Eggplant, and it's objectively the best emote on Twitch. I even have this chat command, and what I'm about to say will shock the people that take things like this seriously. My penis isn't really 12 inches long, and Twin Galaxies didn't really verify to 1982. This is actually a penis joke and a Todd Rogers joke in one. How they spin these types of jokes is insane. In one screenshot, I show some Chinese medicine that my wife got me because she thought it would help us conceive. After my friend mentions Chinese and Australian, I reply with half Chinese, half massive cock. So they spin this to be racist apparently, and claim that I'm saying this about my son, which makes no sense, we hadn't even conceived. There was no son, there wasn't even a sex yet. I could have been having a daughter. This has nothing to do with a boy or a girl or a penis. The joke is that my race isn't Australian, my race is massive cock. Again, it's absurdism. It's a long-running joke between friends. And notice the same person that I said it to repeats a similar joke back to me later on. The speedrunning Reddit also attacked my son's name, who I mentioned would be taking his mother's surname because I don't associate with my father. They attribute the surname Wong with penises, and the oblivious racism on their part is astounding. I named my son Maximus because it means the greatest, and he is the greatest. And those people going after him because of his name are just indescribably terrible. As a side note, in Chinese culture they actually say the family name first, and his Chinese name is Wong chun He. The lies continue. One person claims I was racist against the Super Mario Bros. speedrunner, Lukuki, in a leaked Discord voice chat. This is entirely fabricated. Anyone in my Discord knows I never use voice chat. There has never been a leak, nor have I ever been racist or even insulted Lukuki. I really like Lukuki, and given that we are friends, he himself messaged me saying this was bullshit. A couple of bright sparks did ask for evidence, but of course, none is provided, because it's a complete lie. Another liar claims I asked for nudes in my stream, and again, I am left having no idea what is going on or where this is coming from. I would never ask for nudes, and if anything like this ever happened or was posted, I would never ever approve of that or let it stand. These obsessed haters love to intentionally take screenshots out of context and give them new meanings. In this screenshot, I mention that I'm married and have been with more women than some undisclosed party. Apparently, this is me bragging about sleeping with many women and having the regressive mindset that having sex equals quality as a person. But I wonder what the context is here, and I think the context might be enlightening. If you go and read the actual conversation, I was responding to this. In another GoldenEye speedrunner stream, he and his viewers were trying to make fun of my appearance, saying that I looked like an albino with cancer, and that I don't go outside. Well, the reality is that I am very white because I do have cancer. My body is covered in massive scars from countless surgeries to remove cancer, and I've had to deal with it my entire life. 
Due to my condition, I do try to avoid the sun, as recommended by my doctors. I'm not looking for sympathy or anything, I'm just giving you the context around my response. I would never randomly brag about something like that, nor do I think it's even something anyone should ever focus on. And those who really know me well would tell you that I value character more than anything else, not these superficial things. In this particular instance, however, I was taking a stab at less than reputable people for attacking me over something so juvenile and close to home. My point was that despite the fact that I look like an albino and I do have cancer, I've still done well for myself and I'm living a great life because those things really don't matter. There are even more batshit insane claims, but I'll stop there. You get the point. Of course, everyone believes everything instantly, and the people making the claims know it. No one asks for context, no one cares about the context, they simply enjoy the feeling of going after the villain of the day. With all of this being said, there are definitely things I've said and done in the past that deserve criticism and I need to apologize for. Earlier I mentioned that I was in one of the screenshots from the R White Goose leak and this is what I said. This is from May 2018 and we were discussing the incident where Kendrick Lamar asked a white fan to come on stage to sing one of his songs which contained the N-word. The fan didn't censor the word, was booed by the crowd and eventually removed from the stage. At the time, more than anything, I wanted to defend the fan because they didn't believe they had any ill intent and I felt sorry for them that they were put into that situation and handled it incorrectly. I attempted to defend this position very poorly by stating that it should be okay for anyone of any race to sing the lyrics in hip hop music as they were written. Despite the fact that I did double down on this position a few times when challenged on it, I have ultimately come to realize more and more that my opinion on the issue, and especially the way I expressed it, was extremely insensitive. One of the reasons I was so defensive was because I felt as though my position was always mischaracterized, with people claiming that I was complaining that I couldn't personally use the word. But the truth is that I would never use the word, nor have I ever wanted to, and if I were in that same position as the fan I was defending, I wouldn't have chosen to use it. It was hard to accept the valid criticism when it also came with what I considered to be bad faith efforts to attack my character. But if we were to have a genuine conversation about the issue, we would probably end up agreeing. In any case, it is definitely not my place to be deciding what people of color should or shouldn't find acceptable, and I sincerely apologize for what I said. Another instance where I reacted poorly was when I was called out for the use of the word Jap. For the past 15 years, myself and many other speedrunners have used the word Jap as shorthand for Japanese when referring to the region of the console we use to speedrun. There are three regions we primarily use. European or PAL, North American or NTSC, and Japanese, which we shorten to either JAP, JP, JPN, or NTSCJ. In early 2019, I wanted to create an emote based on the Japanese version of the game, because many people often ask why the Japanese version is used. So I wanted an emote that people could spam whenever that question came up. Obviously, it was going to be eggplant related, because that's the running gag on my channel. I created a censored eggplant and called the emote Jap, what we call the Japanese region of the console we were speedrunning. I didn't think anything of it, but out of nowhere, another person from the community blasted me on Twitter, tagging Twitch and accusing me of using a racial slur and making fun of the Japanese. This shocked me because it didn't even cross my mind that it could be seen as offensive or even as a slur. I became incredibly angry for two reasons. The first is that this person was trying to cancel me for an innocent mistake, and this issue of that word had never been brought up before despite them being in the community and seeing it used for years. The second was because this person had been actively hating on me and my viewers in Discord and their Twitch stream for a while before this. Therefore, I didn't take this as a good faith effort to remove content that could be offensive, but rather as an attack and an opportunity to take me down. I lashed out on Twitter. This was before I had any platform or a noteworthy following. In fact, at this time, the person trying to cancel me had more followers. At this stage, I had not learned how to respond to public criticism in a mature way, and my response was horrible. Once I calmed down, I deleted the tweet and changed the name of the emote to NTSCJ, which is what it remains today. It was never intended to be a slur, and I reacted so negatively because of the previous interactions I'd had with that particular person, and also because this could have easily been resolved in private if they had have explained to me directly how insensitive it was. Aside from this one incident, I haven't really heard anyone complain about the use of the word, despite it still being extremely common in speedrunning to describe that region, and I've even still used 
used it myself in more private settings when describing which version of the game I'm playing. Moving forward, I will definitely retire it though in favor of something more respectful. Being able to respond to concerns from the public in a positive way is something that I have been struggling to learn over the past few years as my platform has grown, and I do think I've made a lot of progress. Even though in the past I may have gotten angry and been way too aggressive and defensive, looking back I still deeply appreciate the feedback and of course it does help. Finally, there is a funny video of me going around from 2014 demonstrating an exercise to overcome social anxiety. The exercise consists of walking up to someone, giving them a compliment, and then walking off. Apparently, this is me trying to be a pickup artist, but if you know anything about pickup, you'd know this isn't pickup at all. Conversely, it's my opinion that almost every single piece of advice given by so called pickup gurus is unhealthy, and I wouldn't endorse it. I've always preached building character, developing self confidence and self esteem, and using honesty, integrity, and respect to build relationships. It is a funny video though, and a lot of you will probably cringe, so I will link it in the description for your viewing pleasure. In order to research videos, I do work with other speedrunners often, so it's a huge shame that many of them will buy into the lies that are currently being spread, and will refuse to be involved with the channel. Everyone loses here, as the videos become less accurate, less informative, and more prone to mistakes. I certainly won't stop talking about speedrunning though. I've done it and loved it for over 20 years. A smear campaign spearheaded by trolls would certainly never stop me from making videos. To those who have been lying about me and my family, and trying to use them as weapons against me, and to those who believe those lies and spread them without asking questions or considering the context, sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, please go fuck yourselves. To everyone else, I appreciate you, I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.